My name is Jamie Knowles. I'm the product manager for ER Studio. So what's new in ER Studio version 19.1? Okay, before we start, just to reset uh, our mission for ER Studio. So ER Studio is an enterprise tool for data architects to design and document data assets. That's the core of what we do. And we've got an ongoing mission to support more and more data products, keep up to date with the versions of relational databases, uh, support new database technologies, file-based formats, etc. Um, we're also trying to connect our team of data architects with other tribes and tools around the organization. Um, so connecting with data governance and data analytics initiative. So the data governance piece, we started in 19.0 with our new and extended features around uh, business glossary. In this release, uh, you're going to see how we connect to other data governance tools. ER Studio has got three components to it. We've got a thick client component, Data Architect. We've got our central repository, um, so we can share in our models and version them. And then running on top of the repository, we've got the web part of ER Studio Team Server Core. And Team Server Core contains the, uh, the business glossary and our uh, growing data catalog capabilities. And it's from Team Server Core that we're going to talk about our, our integrations with other data governance products. So our overall mission is to produce a model containing three sections. Over on the right, we've got our physical models of data assets in technical language. Um, on the left-hand side of the screen, we've got two models that represent the information of the organization. So traditionally with data modeling, we'll build logical data models that represent our, our data assets uh, that connect to our physical data models. We've now got above that our business glossary. So again, we want to be able to build a model of the information of the organization, but have it in a more um, business-friendly format um, made up of business terms. And as well as having a, a flat list of business terms, we want to be able to connect those terms together into an ontology with taxonomies and relationships between them. And as an enterprise model, this is the sort of model that we might want to produce. So in the middle of the screen there, you've got your, your layers of enterprise level conceptual model an enterprise common logical model. And then below that, for each of our data assets, for each project, we might want to create a, a logical and physical model. And we can link them together through universal mappings in, in ER Studio. So the newer part is on the left, our business glossary. So we want to be able to um, create a business glossary. And we, then we want to be able to relate it to our, um, our data models. And in the demonstration that you're about to see, you'll see how we, we can publish a lot of this information to the Calibra data governance tool. Okay, so a summary of the, the, the two areas that we've developed in this release. So in Data Architect, um, we've done a lot of work on Oracle. I'm going to take you through the individual features in there. And then the second part is in Team Server, the, the Calibra integration. So let's start with the Calibra integration with Team Server. The first thing, you, you don't need to be coding against the Calibra REST-based API. We've done all the work. So everything is configurable through some admin settings. And the summary of, of the integration is that you can synchronize the, the business glossaries of the two tools. No matter which tool we go to, when we look at a business term, we should be able to get the same information. The business glossaries are identical across the two tools. We're really leveraging a lot of the, the 19.0 features. That connection of business terms across to our data models, that is giving us lots of valuable knowledge that is going to be useful in, in the Calibra catalog of catalogs. So the big question is being able to browse for information through the business glossary, find a piece of information and say, where is it in terms of my data assets or data models? So we want our data architects that are um, intimate with those data assets to help with that mapping exercise of mapping Calibra terms to ER objects. So there's a lot of features in Data Architect and Team Server that will really help with that. We've brought uh, the business glossary right inside Data Architect. So when you're using Data Architect to model a data asset, then you have all the Calibra terms now available within Data Architect. And we've also got the, the bulk harvesting capability as well. So if we're starting off a, a Calibra project, Maybe we've got some really good quality logical data models. Maybe we've even got that enterprise logical data model. So the version 19 features where we can harvest terms from a logical data model and the relationships between them, we can then push all that to Calibra 
and that's the next partner, so we can publish logical and physical data models to Calibra, along with all the mappings to the business terms. So we can really sort of help populate um, the Calibra catalogue of catalogues and maintain traceability from our data models back to those uh, business terms. The benefit being that we're, we're now running a united ecosystem between the, the two groups. We've got Calibra in the business and our data architecture team using ER Studio over in IT. Now we've got more detailed videos and documents on this, but in the integration we've done a lot of work mapping the meta models between the two tools. So over on the left there you see business term meta model for ER Studio. There's our new version 19 relationships. Over on the right, the Calibra meta model. So you can map a glossary to um, a domain inside a community in Calibra. Um, you can map the uh, the relationship types between them. There's, there's flexibility to map the properties uh, between the two tools, including custom properties. Likewise, for the logical data model, we've mapped the, the, the two worlds across. So a logical data model in ER Studio can be mapped to a domain in Calibra of type logical data dictionary. And there's an object to object mapping that we've set up. Again, there's, there's flexibility there for you to decide which uh, properties of objects on either side you want to uh, publish and map. And then the last one there is the, the physical data model. So again, lots of mappings that we've, we've already set up. So let's go and have a look in the tool. So the first new feature to look at is in our admin settings. We've added a new custom property system into managed attributes. Now, previously, you'd have to go to your data dictionary and data architect, create some attachments within a enterprise data dictionary and publish that to team server. And then you'd have uh, properties available as managed attributes to add to different objects. Um, now we've got uh, a new simplified custom property system. So I can create custom properties uh, and I can set a data type for those and then I can add them to my different object types. So I've now added a new custom property to my term. Once we set up the properties in, in Team Server, and we've set up our properties and relationships in Calibra, we can start mapping them together. So we've got a brand new admin section. Um, this admin section can be uh, controlled through permissions and there's various layers. So the integration's all configurable through user interface. There's no coding required. So you set up your connection to, to Calibra, test it, define um, which side is the master. Now there's little URLs on either side. So we actually go and look in Team Server. So we find a term, it's terms employee inside human resources. So I've got various properties in here. Um, I've got all my ontological relationships so employee has got various attributes here. We can see it's related to other terms. It's also related to a whole bunch of, uh, um, of ER objects. You'll see now that there's a, a new heading here, open in Calibra. So I can hop across the fence to Calibra and see the same term inside our human resources glossary that we've mapped to. All the same properties are mapped. All our relationships from team server are all here and also mappings to um, data models. If I go to look inside, so I've got a community called demo. Inside I've got four domains, one domain of type logical data dictionary, two physical data dictionaries and a glossary. So over in the admin screen here, there's various settings. Most of the things are, are configurable. So these are the labels that appear in either tool so we can hop between them. You can define the property mappings on either side of the fence. So, so a business term, we can define which properties in Calibra are mapped to which properties in Team Server. Likewise for tables, columns, entities, and attributes. So here you see we've mapped description to definition. We've got a property, physical data type, mapped to composite data type, etc. So for business terms, we can map the relationships. So again, we've got Calibra relationships on this side, and um, we take into account the, the, the hierarchical structure, the inheritance uh, uh, model of, of Calibra. We can work out which relationships are valid uh, between business terms. Then we can map it to the, uh, the core out-of-the-box business terms in ER Studio. Once you've mapped all the properties and relationships, then there's two things to do. We decide which domains in Calibra we map to which glossaries in Team Server. So here I'm mapping in that demo community, the Human Resources Glossary. We're mapping to our Human Resources Glossary on the Team Server side. And you can decide whether you want to synchronize all Calibra terms or ones only of a cert status. On the data modeling side, we can then decide 
which data models in ER Studio. So here we've got a logical model inside our HR database and two physical models. And we've mapped those to those three um, domains in the uh, demo community we were just looking at. And once you've mapped them, then you can make a decision on how is the publishing process um, going to be carried out. So for business terms, early on we set a, a polling period and it checks for differences um, every so many minutes that you set in, in the polling period. For data models, you can decide whether to publish manually through this uh, interface here. So I can check the box and hit publish. Or we can decide that as soon as uh, a model is published, from data architects into the team server repository and then from the team server repository to the um, team server core user interface that normal publishing process that you guys use um, upon that point we can automatically push straight across to calibra so that's pretty much the calibra integration so we're ensuring that the business glossaries are synchronized between the two tools as a term is created in one it'll create it on the other side um, as changes are made on one, um, they're updated on the other side. Obviously, you can you can limit on both sides um, whether users can make changes or even create things uh, uh, in that part of the tool. And then for the data models, we can publish um, logical and physical models directly to Calibra. Let's now look at the features that we've added to Data Architect. So we've done a huge amount of work around Oracle. So in our last release, version 19.0, we did a big uplift on SQL Server with a brand new parser. We've done the same sort of thing for, for Oracle. Um, the new parser supports all the current grammar of Oracle, so it's no longer failing on, on operators, with full support for operators such as pivots and unpivot. Identity columns you've been asking for for a long time, support for external tables, more options around partitioning and compression. Just gonna have a look at some of the features. So this is an Oracle physical model. Let's take a look at this view here. Um, so we can see that this view has got a pivot statement in there and now validates uh, properly. Um, it'll also recognize uh, the contents of the pivot and give you the, the relevant lines to, to mark where the source tables are for the view. Other important new additions, identity column. You've been asking this for a long time. So there it is now supported properly um, within the column editor. And then over on the right, there's more details on the identity property. Partitioning. Lots of new features in partitioning. So we now can support composite partitions based on, on ranges. So here you can see my salary there is split into low, medium and high. We can also support interval partitioning on ranges. So here in my partition, uh, set it to range. As soon as I select either a date or a number column, then my interval text box appears and I can set a value into that. We've also now got support for reference partitioning. So a feature of Oracle is where you can inherit um, the partitioning characteristics of a parent table. So if these two tables down here, which are children of the EMP table, which has already got partitioning set. So if I open up the child table, I can now see I've got a partition by reference checkbox available. And then I can choose the foreign key uh, relationship. So if there were more foreign key relationships where this was the child and the parent had partitioning, then I'd, I'd see a whole list of them here. There's only one in this case. So there's a reference partitioning. We fixed a few issues around compression. So now when you set compression, the DDL will be formed correctly. We've also fixed an issue uh, with compression on indexes. Another small feature where you have a column of data type char and var char, you can set the size unit to be the char or byte. And I think by default it's uh, it's byte. All we can do now when you would generate the physical model, just to show you that, it's when you generate the physical model now, there's an option on page four of the generate physical model wizard to set the default to be the byte or char, which is quite useful, so save some time. Okay, so let's summarize. So with Data Architects, we've done a big uplift on Oracle. We've got a brand new parser in there, so all the latest grammars are now supported. Some features that you guys have been asking for, are various bug fixes that have come into Oracle and generally in, in Data Architects. Team server side, really all about the Calibra integration, extending the journey that we started in version 19.0 around business glossary and data governance. Okay, thanks very much for watching. Hope to see you again soon.